Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Peter Falbo on behalf of the uh, ALCCC view. Just my little way of background. <clears throat> I represent the contract purchasers of the site that is generally referred to as the CV Towers. Um, and at the present time, the Seaview Towers <clears throat> has an approval that was obtained by the current owners for 100 to 110 condominium units in one building. Uh, and they just recently received an extension from the planning board to continue that approval. However, they no longer want to develop the job and have offered it for sale, and my clients have entered into a contract to purchase it. Uh, within the framework of the existing approval, as far as setbacks and lot coverage and all that stuff, we're working within that same, uh, or those same parameters, so we're not really altering the site per se, but we're changing, or hope to change um, the design of the building to make it more attractive, more functional, uh, and in the process, as will be explained, uh, we're also going to uh, provide an easement to the city so that they can change the parking configuration on uh, Ocean Avenue and South Bath Avenue to pick up more on-street uh, on parking. Mr. Montefort is our architect. Uh, also a son of Long Branch, uh, and with his permission, I'll have him describe what we're proposing, and then I'll go on further and describe what we're asking this council to do uh, in order to us effectuate this development. Jim? Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so this is uh, our concept drawing, uh, where we are today. It's uh, we are preliminarily working through the plans. Our, our current design is to do a crescent-shaped building where all the units are phasing outward towards the ocean as they come around in a curve. Um, the, the building itself will have 140 units. Uh, it has the same exact lot coverage number. It will be 12 stories above parking. So this is our parking level here. And then there's another level below grade because we're increasing the number of parking spaces on the property so we can uh, satisfy the 140 the extra units plus our amenities and plus our, our public uh, our commercial spot. So also along here you can see how we've uh, created this parking which was originally on the original approval. That's uh, 59 cars that would be added to the street. We're berming up here and we're adding these public areas of uh, like shade structures, uh, little plazas, uh, some flags coming down here and uh, just making this more of a public uh, entity along the street because our building is raised up uh, about 10 feet higher than the street itself. We have a pool on the end with an infinity edge that comes over and then this is our amenity deck with our uh, health club that is part of our open uh, membership uh, health club that was approved in the original approval. Uh, the building steps up this way off the ocean and it gets up to nine stories in the middle, and then there's a clubhouse also on the roof here, and then the penthouses uh, step up above that. So this is uh, our, our zoning comparison from where we were before to where we are now. The red dotted line was the original um, footprint of the parking garage that was there and the platform that was there. The blue dotted in area is the footprint of the building that was there. Our building is the green is our first floor, um, and then the purple is our crescent shape, and then this piece goes uh, up towards uh, east-west, away from the ocean. Um, the building has to be longer in this direction than in this direction, so that's why this stem comes out and steps up. And that's for the purpose of satisfying the CAFR requirement. This is a CAFR requirement, yes. So also our building, as, as you go through your packet, you'll see that our building is is 12, it's 10, at 12, 11, 10, and then it's, it stops at 9. So it kind of, it's going around and down at the same time towards the middle of the site. Um, we have, let's see, the original approval had 249 cars at Bay Valley, and they had 191 cars uh, just basically parked. 
our building, we're proposing two levels of parking, and we're going to have uh, 409 cars currently, um, which well satisfies all the needs for parking on this site. Not to mention the back pad has added 60 spaces around the perimeter. So this is a, a just a quick elevation of the front of the building. It faces Ocean Boulevard. It curves in this way, and then there's a big drop-off area here that you drive up, and then it's all burned in the front. And you can see the building comes down and around as it goes through this curve. And they have uh, windows spat spattered through this corridor that comes around. This is the side from uh, South Bath Avenue. As you can see, this is our camper line that we have to maintain for height and uh, air, shadows. This is our ocean. So here's our parking levels. So we have a level that's below grade that starts at elevation 18. And then we have uh, a level above that which starts at 28. And then our plaza is at 34. So you will drive up off the street onto this uh, courtyard. And then there's a drop off and our lobby starts here and it goes up a story. Uh, there's steps on both sides and then this would allow you to come in and have accessibility. From there there's also two other elevators, so it's service with three elevators. This is our plaza level. This shows our, this is our health spa. This is a game room. This is a uh, building amenities here. There's also units that stretch around this first front over here on this side. This is our large plaza area, and these are the courtyards along the street. And then again, this looks down at the, at the uh, drop-off area that drives into the parking. And then as the building goes up, these are my uh, Kaffir lines of height. So the building steps up this way, it comes up to the, to the ninth floor, I believe it steps up to. Yep, and at the ninth floor, we have another clubhouse with a big uh, plaza in front of that, and then these units start stepping away. And then this is our roof, and then the, the 11 and, and 10 floors. Um, so we have the original approval on the, um, the public, uh, the non-residential was 49,000, and I believe it were at the same number plus, um, plus the outside public areas that we've created around the building to satisfy the non-residential requirements. Um, that's pretty much all of it. The building's around 290,000. What was the height of the building that's currently approved? 12 stories over parking. So in what, what are you talking about? 12 stories above parking. Okay, so it's the same, it's not higher? Uh, no, it's taller because I, um, it's 130 feet. I believe theirs was 120. And I only did that because uh, we need more height to create a nice first floor height and then all the, well, I've been running into this with all these buildings up there and along the shore. It's like, if you try and do 10 foot per floor, it just doesn't work. So we're trying to do 10, eight per floor, mm -hmm. uh, floor to floor height. And that gives us more room to get nice ceilings and you know, really provide a good amenity for the people that live there. And oh, by the way, that height, that increases also increases my setback. So my tower is in further than the original towers from the corners. It comes at 65 feet instead of 60. Um, approximately how many people will be living in this facility? How many people will be living in there? It yeah. depends on how many people are in their families. There's 140 units. Yeah. Okay, but how many bedrooms there? There are all two bedrooms or some threes. Some two more threes. So we could potentially have um, children that would be attending our school system. Yeah. Um, I'm not so sure this is a kid friendly development, but there would probably be a small amount of children, I would imagine. How big are the units? But I think this is how big are the units? The units are 1,500 starting, and they go up to about 2,000. And is that that's smaller than the units that work that? They had no units. I, I have their plan, and it was really never defined. It was just a plate. There's no units defined. In the, the, original, the original approval did not have a defined floor plan. And the concept at that time, as I understand in speaking with the um, developer, was they wanted a prospective purchaser to come in and say, how big of a unit do you want? You want 4,000 square feet? We can give you a 4,000 square feet unit. We want 1,000 square feet, we give you a 1,000 square foot unit. So there was never a defined plan, which was something that 
that we didn't feel comfortable with. That we thought that if we provided a range of sizes, that that would be more uh, in keeping with what the market would deal with or the market would accept, uh, and would still provide uh, as much as possible to the prospective purchaser. Having said that, if someone comes in and says, I want to combine three units or I want to combine two units, you know, if they're willing to pay for it, we're willing to uh, accommodate them uh, within reason. We just don't want to get too, too crazy with the configurations. Uh, as you can see, we're still working on um, design of the units, the layouts and things of that nature. Uh, and it's the age-old story. You have the developer, and then you have the marketer, and you have the PR guy, and you have the broker, and the more people you put around the table, uh, the more opinions uh, you come up with as to how it should look. Uh, this is where we're starting. We're trying to provide everybody with an ocean view, and we're trying to do it in a fashion that we don't impact at all on Ocean Avenue, the boardwalk, or the beach from the point of view of a, of a shadow or a shade area. So that's why we've kept within the appropriate setbacks. <clears throat> the difference between this unit and, and or this proposal and what, what has been approved is that the existing approval uh, calls for 100 units, um, and it also calls for a lot of the cars to be valid. And quite honestly, when we looked at it, um, I said the only person that's going to make money on this deal is the valet, uh, because they were stocking the, the, the valet car 6D. And, and basically said, everybody's going to be duking the valet to make sure that it's one or two and not number six. So that's one of the reasons we uh, expanded the parking concept, and also to provide enough parking on the site. The reason we're before you, uh, respectfully, is because your ordinance pr presently provides for maximum density on this site of 110 units, even though the actual approval is for 110 units. 100 units. <coughs> this ordinance, your ordinance as it is right now, uh, also permits us to have 100 units of condos, plus we can build a 100 unit hotel. Discussions with uh, the mayor, Mr. Renault, um, Mr. Jackson, everybody felt that a hotel plus 100 units would be a lot of intensity of use on one piece of property. It was then our feeling that if we could increase the density on the site so that we could come up with 140 units, uh, that we would not need the hotel. The other item that was pushed in our discussions was that we wanted to make sure we had more than enough parking, and we've increased the parking capacity over what has been um, originally approved. We're still going to have a valet, but when the valet takes your car, you've got to put it in a spot so that you'll be able to, you know, if you want to use the valet, you'll be able to put it in a spot so that you come down, you don't have to wait for the valet to move a half a dozen cars before they get to your car. Uh, also, can I say something? Sure. The 1,500 average square foot of each unit is, conforms with what's going on in the area. It's, it's about the, the right size, the same size as the other developments, and it should conform very well in the neighborhood. So, you know, there were, there were two concerns, obviously, that we'll discuss with Mr. Jackson and Mr. Reno. I just wanted to put that out there. Number one, that the administration, the council, is not interested in granting an abatement for this project. And I just wanted to be clear that. Right. And the other thing, as I mentioned, is that we talked about that those two buildings there had been standing in my store for two decades, I guess. And you know, we get a lot of complaints about that. So the priority for us, I think, would, would be to get those taken down as soon as possible. We, we've, spoken, we've spoken with 
uh, several demolition companies. And we're in serious negotiations with Ward. The timeline that has been given to us by virtually every contractor that we've spoken to is that the physical demolition of the building, will prob depending on weather, will probably take four and a half to five months. They're giving that as a conservative time period so that we don't tell you we're going to get it down in three months and then come back and say we know the two-month extension. That's the number they've given us. They've also indicated, however, that the building has some environmental problems. There's asbestos tile all over the place. Uh, and additionally, there is a lot of the, um, uh, the plumbing is wrapped or has asbestos casing around it. All that asbestos and there's also a considerable amount of uh, lead painted wood, door jams, doors, etc. All of those contaminants have to be removed before you can start the actual demolition. So we're sort of working on the concept that we would enter into a contract with the uh, demolition company. The idea right now we're, we're scheduled to close on or about November 4th. <clears throat> that they would get in there, for lack of a better word, on November 5th and start doing their environmental remediation. Um, to the extent that they have to get in there before that to do an environmental assessment, we work with the um, present owner that they'll allow our professionals in the building to do that assessment. We're anticipating, or not us, the demolition company is anticipating that it's going to take them at least two months to rid the building of the asbestos, the tiles, wrapping, and whatever else. And that, that's um, an optimistic approach because depending on the condition of the asbestos, if it's friable, it's got to be encapsulated before it's removed from the building. These are requirements of the DEP. These aren't, this isn't something we're looking to unnecessarily incur the expense. <clears throat> Once they do that, they can, they can start demolishing the building. If we have reasonable weather, we're anticipating the buildings will be down by the end of May. You may still have some rubble on the site, which will be removing, but the towers will be down. I'm concerned, though, about the summer, you know, traffic <coughs> and having that kind of thing going on when people are at the beach. So um, can you guarantee that it will be done before our summer uh, Well, the summer, your, summer, your summer season starts on Memorial Day, right, which is the end of May. Yeah. We're hoping to have it down by then. If we've got, if we have good weather, it'll move <coughs> that. There, the timeline they've given us is four and a half to five months. And the gentleman who gave it to us say, I'm, I'm being conservative. You know, if weather is good, if conditions are good, they'll be down ahead of time. Whether or not the site will be totally clear <clears throat> by that time, I don't know. We don't anticipate having any impact on Ocean Avenue or South Bath Avenue. The trucks will be coming in and out, the same way they do on the other construction sites. What, why is it? Why are we this? There's seven months up front, so why is this all not starting until November? First of all, we have to get the ordinance changed. Okay, so that's number one. So that's April. So, uh, so that's April. The sellers, for, for whatever reason we don't know, have said November 4th is when we want to close. Is there a possibility of moving that up, given the councilwoman's <coughs> concern and giving, because you're now essentially talking about those buildings not coming down at the earliest until May of next year, so that's 14 months from now. Is there, you know, my understanding was that there was some urgency to get this ordinance done because of the contract. So we're going to rush to get the ordinance done and then wait seven months before it closes. No, we, we have, before I can build this building, <coughs> as you were aware, Mr. Renone, I have to go back and get the calf approval amended. Okay. I also have to get uh, amended site plan approval from the uh, planning board. 
Sounds like a new second letter. Excuse me? It sounds like a Well, you're saying it's amended. This is a completely I mean, I'm, I'm going to guess our engineers in the back of the room, but I'm going to guess this is a completely new building, new site plan, new everything, right? Well, it is, but we're, we're, we're within the same footprint. We're not expanding. We're not going out as far as setbacks are concerned or anything else. Right. Um, so we're figuring, <coughs> you know, come hell or high water, we have to close November 4th. Uh, either that or we lose a lot of money. Is it is it that the sellers don't want to close until November, or is it that you don't want to close until you get all of your approval? It's a combination of both. Well, we need the time. Okay, Tom. We need the time to do the pre-construction, the final design, the <coughs> blueprints, the final plans, to do the bidding. This is normal development time on a project of this size. I, yeah, that I don't understand. That's that's. We're just worried about the demolition happening in a, correct when the summer beach starts. You know, okay, sure some, you say by the end of May, but if it delays it a month, we're hidden by into the beach area. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're doing your building plan. <coughs> I'm guessing that all of your building plans start with the building being taken down. So you preparing your building plans does, doesn't need to delay taking the building down because you've no. got to take the building down no matter what, right? Right. So the question is, is what can we do to speed up the time frame as to when the building comes down? Why can't that process start in, on September 1st? We would have to close on the property. There you go. We would have to close on the property. And we cannot close on the property. First of all, there's a restriction in the, in the contract. But even if we wanted to, we couldn't close on the property without final site plan approval and CAFRA approval. And we figured that there's some time, lead time to get that done. Do you need a CAFRA approval for the demolition? No. We wouldn't close if we don't have capital. Capital for what? Okay, so we we need to close on the property. The, uh, the uh, seller will love us to take down the building. So you have a ticket, but I, we have to close on the property. Yeah, I understand there's at least six months for capital the, application. The, the seller time. is not going to allow us to demolish the building until, until because they don't want anything to jeopardize their approval. Yeah. Okay. We'll take it down as fast as possible. I mean, uh, we've got two bids out. And for a third, and we might get it in a closer timetable. But this is, the, this is the conservative estimate that we've gotten from the biggest contract. We're, we're, we're try, trying to be forthright with it. And I could tell you, okay, so start taking it down in September, and then show up at the end of August and say, we can't take it down. Well, then would you be willing to wait to take it down until after the summer's over? We thought it was a priority to get it down before the yeah, summer. No, we're not talking about this summer. We're talking about yeah. the following summer. Yeah, but I mean, if we just don't want to hit it in the middle of the summer. Or something. No, no. We'll, well, we don't either. I live in Long Beach. Okay. We're looking to have it based upon the schedule that they gave us in our closing. We're looking to have the building, the towers down by the end of May 2020. We will use our best efforts to do the demolition as soon as possible to oversee the demolition to make sure that there are no delays. I, I mean, I think what this we're going to say, I'm kind of saying the same thing, is that we'd like to see this all done so we have an insurance that we're not running close to right. Memorial Day. Right. Right. Yeah, that's what right. 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 mm -hmm. no, I mean, we'd like to get it done, because otherwise, if you don't start until um, no, September of 2020, then no, this building is not going to be down until yeah. the winter of 2021. Yeah. So yeah. you'll we're, you'll we're, go two more beach seasons with that eyesore being we're, there. We're going to do it before that. The, the, rea the reality is, if we don't do it now, I think right now we're the best game in town. Get it now. If we if we walk away from the job. Then they have to wait for another buyer to come along, and then they'll go through these whole negotiations again. <laughs> so I, I, I understand entirely. Uh, the mayor made it abundantly clear that um, the <coughs> idea was to get the towers down as soon as possible. Even before we came here, we went out and we've been soliciting bids, uh, you know, for the demolition. I'm just relating to you what has been related to us. I mean, and the, the, all the contractors have used the term 
it's a conservative estimate of four and a half to five months. And but they also put the caveat in it, depending on weather, uh, things of that nature. If we get a balmy winter, you know, and we don't have to contend with storms and things of that nature, they might very well <coughs> get it down by eight. But, you know. We also have an economic incentive to get it down ASAP because when we close, there's a clock start on the interest. And time is money in construction. Right. We're very aware of it. We're, we're developers, we're, we're builders. We, we, know, we understand that concept. So it's in our, we have an incentive to get those buildings down ASAP and to start construction. Just by way of information, the, the estimated cost on the demolition of this building uh, is two and a half to three and a half million dollars, depending on how much contamination is in the building. Just the outright demolition is two and a half, plus the, plus the remediation. And um, how much will these units be selling for approximately? Uh, they'll be selling uh, what's consistent with the current uh, competitive set that's out there between a million and a million two. For a two bedroom. Mr. Montfort, when you talk about public amenities, what is it specifically referring to? Well, the original... I, mean, I know you were talking about the whole landscape. Yeah. Well, the, beyond that. well the original approval had a uh, health club that was right. open to the public. Um, it was like there was a certain, certain number of memberships that would be available to the public, and that's that's what precipitated a lot of the valet parking, because there weren't an equal number of parking spaces or the size of the spot of the health club. That's why we've upped the number of um, parking spaces so we don't have that type of a situation. So if the public comes, uh, membership is sold, they come, they'll be able to get there, have a parking space, et cetera, without interfering with anyone else. And that, that'll hold true even in the summer because it was anticipated on the original plan. And I, when I, say what was anticipated under the original plan. This is what I've been told by the developer and the professionals that handled the original plan. Um, the um, concept was that in the winter time, they figured a certain percentage of these unit owners would not occupy because uh, they would live elsewhere, and therefore there would not be a problem with parking in the winter time. Felt, however, that in the summertime, when everybody was down, that's when you would have. Okay, there, are no okay. Yeah. Okay. there are no one bedrooms. Okay. There are no one bedrooms. No, there are actually they have two bedrooms and they have like a deck. Okay. Actually, two bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I like how it's set. For lack of a better word, put up or shut up. Um, we've already put up considerable dollars, uh, and we've got to put up more dollars. If we put up the more dollars, they become non-refundable. So one of the reasons we were coming for the board this evening was to see if we could get an indication as to whether or not they would amend the ordinance for the zone to increase the density to allow 140 units. If the council is not amenable to that, then we'll just walk away from the job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Each property would get that much more. Yes, they go to the midline. As, as unless someone could prove that years ago the entire right of way was part, part of one mother property. If you can prove that, it all goes to one side. If you can't, it goes 50 50. 
Paul, you, by the way, you win the prize for knowing that. <laughs> Nobody knows that. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. <laughs> but the, but the answer is that it looks like yeah. it. Okay, so that's, that's very impressive. But so, so each each one will, will get it. But my question is, at your property line where now this right away you could technically walk through, or yes. let's say there's a murder investigation on Broadway, an emergency vehicle had to get in there. Is it your plan to, to somehow close that off? Fence it. You would fence it. Would you fence it with a gate? Would you fence it with a way so that if uh, an emergency vehicle, God forbid, had to get into the back of the board of the property, they could still go through? I don't think there's a problem with that. Yeah, they, I mean, if an emergency vehicle need to get in there and it's a fence, a fire truck's going to knock it over. With Correct. No issues. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, what I'm saying. But I wouldn't, I mean, if there's a gate, then it would, would, right. would, would that be an issue? I don't know, Chief, is is that a concern to you one way or the other? Um, it would be great if we could get behind there, but it's nothing that we do very often. Um, it's not something you know, like, like he said, probably the worst case would be a fire that, that they would need to set up something back there. Um, Correct. Otherwise, we could go around the other side. So would that be a if we could do a gate for you or if we, if no, we no, asked you to so. do that? No. Well, so. just, if we put up a fence and, it, and part of the fence was a gate, is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, so that if they needed to get But well, we would control the gate. Well, I, I'm told that the fire truck doesn't really care whether you control it or not. They just <laughs> I, I suspect you're right, and that's nothing to do with the law. <laughs> I've asked that question of Chief before. It's like, we don't need keys. We just go ahead. Right. 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 We, we, we'll use one that we can replace by right, right. if they drive right. right through. So if I, if I may, then, you know, one of, one of my concerns always is, if, you know, and I've thought about this thing over the years for a long time, um, and I, I, I may have some point or another had a discussion with the police department about it. One thing I don't want to do is to have that be an opaque situation behind the Ciccone building because then that just becomes ripe for an issue of, 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 of drug dealing or whatever other... What do you mean by opaque? I'm sorry. Well, that you can't see through. Oh, yeah. So in other words, I don't want the police going down Morrell Street and have no ability to see through there. That was one of the reasons, one yeah, one of the reasons why we, we had a number of years ago just put flower pots in there so that we didn't create an, uh, an unsafe opportunity behind there. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean no good to have that kind of situation going on back there. Okay. Right now it's kind of a right away to nowhere. Um, and um, I don't know if anybody on the council had any questions that either I or one of the bullies can answer. It's like I say, you probably you may not have known it was there uh, because it's not something that jumps out at you. But, uh, um, I know I've been to the property numerous times not to look at the rifle, but the, um, uh, and when I first saw it, who uses that? Um, and the fact that it doesn't connect on the Pearl Avenue, Pearl Street to the side, I'm a Long Range native too, so it's a Long Range name. <laughs> so uh, um, it was the type of thing when I, when I first looked at it, I said, what's this doing here? Why is this all that's left of it? I mean, why didn't they just get rid of the whole thing packed in a day? And I guess I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, but I understand there's been a draft. I haven't seen it, but uh, Mr. Renault tells me there's a draft floating around uh, of uh, an ordinance that, that should you be so inclined to introduce it at one meeting at the public hearing on the vote. So, um, and if that's the case, we'd likely show up again for the that in case anybody's there with attention. And one of the things that bothers me is, I'm a, as you know, I'm the borough attorney next door in West Long Beach, and uh, the, that trailer thing that's sitting in the right of way, if the right of way was so important, you wouldn't put a trailer in the middle of it. <laughs> well, clearly those people treat that property like it's theirs, they, much, they much have, like you pay that part of it, right? Yes. Yeah. But the well, city gave a permit for that. And apparently it has no uh, sunset date. It's just there. It's a trailer permit for it. Yeah. yeah. It's apparently under a prior administration. I was going to say, myself, like, who needs to look into that? Why is there? <laughs> We're not trying if, to be honest with you. If you, if you vacate the right of way, we don't care what you do with that trailer. But, but it just seems if, if somebody having to do with the buildings were to complain, that they think it's not right. A legitimate question would be is, and why do you have that trailer sitting there for three, four, five yeah. years when it, it shouldn't be there? I mean, it's, it's, and if they even give a permit to put in a, 
you know, right away. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if I could add one more thing, that what kind of precipitate brought this whole thing to a head was, I guess, about a year ago or so, Gabriel's towing all of a sudden started parking a, a, a tow truck behind mm -hmm. the furniture center. So uh, I had asked the code enforcement officer at uh, the time to do something about it. And they moved it and then stored it in the parking lot uh, over behind the snow bike. And again, we rest that back with everything like 10 high and folks in the staging area. Mm -hmm. we, we actually live on top of the town. And I always say, I choked up by the town all night long. By the way, I don't mean to cut these guys short, but this. Kevin has to leave, so I need to have you to leave 10 minutes at the time. I don't think we have anything else to do. Thank you. 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 Dangler? Yes. Mr. Vieira? Yes. Dr. Bo? Yes. Dr. Sully? Yes. 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 Y